Hello YouTube, this is The Bucket coming at you today with my Bolo C96 Broom Handle Mauser. Uh, this gun was made by the Mauser Company starting in 1896. They made it through 1937, uh, at which point they got the contract to start producing the P08 Luger, and they made this for the remainder of the time that they were a company until after World War II. So this is my Mauser Luger, but we're going to talk about my C96 for today. These guns were the brainchild of three brothers, the Federley brothers, uh, Friedrich, Joseph, and um, Fidel were the three brothers that ended up starting to work on this pistol. And um, when Mauser decided that he really wanted to be offering a military pistol, uh, semi-automatic, he went to them and they agreed that uh, Mauser would uh, come up with the patent or apply for the patent. And they started making the Mauser, Mauser military pistol. And since it was adopted in 1896, that's where the C96 comes from. These were chambered in 763 Mauser. Uh, you could still purchase this ammo to this day. Uh, here's a box of the Fiocchi stuff. It's a necked cartridge that um, was really popular with early auto loading pistols. It was easier to chamber these if it had a necked cartridge. So you see stuff like the 30 uh, Luger, the 763 Borchard cartridges. A lot of them were necked. Um, as militaries kind of started thinking that nine millimeter was probably a better deal, you'll start seeing some of these guns being chambered in nine millimeter. And since there was the uh, 30 uh, Mauser and the nine millimeter, you'll see a lot of the nine millimeter ones have a nine and it's painted in red or black, hence the term red nine. These guns were uh, really pot. So like, at that time, the Spanish were just like straight up copying anything. So that's where you see the Astra 900s being a copy. Uh, you'll actually see a lot of these as Chinese copies um, as well because they were really popular in China. And I'll talk about that when I explain the Bolo. So Bolo, after World War I, the Treaty of Versailles restricted what the Germans could produce. And so they came up with some rules, and for the, these to still be produced, they had to shorten the grip and shorten the barrel. This is a 3.9 inch barrel. And when they did both of those, that uh, was okay to with the uh, Treaty of Versailles. So that's what they mean when you see Bolo. The military ones before and after have longer barrels and the grips are a little bit longer. So this was really designed um, during that interwar period these were really, really popular by the Russians. Um, hence the name Bolo is kind of the terminology because a lot of the Bolsheviks ended up using these. Also, the Chinese really liked these for a couple of different reasons. One, uh, people were not allowed to sell uh, rifles to the Chinese at the time. So these came with a stock lug and actually a wooden stock often came with these that doubled as a holster, which allowed these guns to be uh, more... Um, dynamic for the Chinese. So you see a ton of these that were imported into China and copied by the Chinese when they got there. Um, I really like the tangent sight. And because some of these were chambered for a stock, um, this tangent sight um, goes all the way up to a thousand yards on mine. And, you know, with a stock and with you shouldering this gun, this actually could be get you some a lot more distance um, accurate shooting. So I really like that there's a tangent sight on this one. The Chinese like to call these box cannons because of the box nature on the front. Um, it's kind of different because, you know, when you look at so many of the pistols and what became uh, normal is detachable box magazines, but also they're usually held in the grip like the Borchard design. This one is a little bit different in the fact that the magazine sits um, in front of the pistol and it also fires from a stripper clip. So uh, when you go ahead and you pull the bolt back to load the gun, you'd actually load rounds into the stripper clip and put it into this uh, guide, push down the bullets. And then actually when you pull out the stripper clip, uh, there's nothing holding this bolt back anymore, and the bolt will actually slam forward. This is a short uh, recoil design gun. There's actually a locking block that keeps the barrel attached to the uh, bolt, 
and keeps it all locked up prior to um, the gases being vented out the front and making the gun safe. So um, when I saw this pistol, I was really excited. I ended up deciding that I wanted to go to a uh, really well reputable dealer. So I decided I was going to go through Legacy Collectibles. And I'll tell you a little bit of why I decided to do that. I've seen these at gun shows. I've seen these in like pawn shops from time to time. They're, the clockwork nature of all the moving pieces are really, really tight. And I did not, I wanted to make sure that um, the person I was buying it from could tell me really, really what I was getting. And they were honest with me. The uh, locking block right here uh, does not match to the gun. And so does the floor plate here with my uh, magazine which are two things that I was okay with. I like the fact that it was well patinaed um, and they could tell me that this functions as it should. And it was worth it to me to maybe spend a little bit of extra money. These are over a thousand dollar guns. And you know, if you're gonna buy it, you wanna make sure that you have an expert that's gone through it. So uh, Legacy Collectibles has been really good to me before. And so I was happy to go ahead and get it. So as you can see, I bought some ammo, I bought some stripper clips, and when I had it uh, uh, shipped to my FFL, I got excited and I took it out to the range. And you can see I got them all on the paper at about seven to 10 yards, shooting a little high into the left, but it was holding a pretty good group, even though the rifling is not as strong as it was when it came out to the factory. But after I got a little, uh, a little less excited and calmed down. I ended up holding a much better group and I actually got two holes in this bullseye here. So at seven to 10 yards, even this very, very old gun, even with these very, very small, small sights was something that you could hold uh, on and hold a group with. So that made me happy. I ended up then taking it to the range with uh, Oscar, the Goat Whisper, Tanfolio. We all had a really good time shooting this gun. It shot flawlessly. I didn't have any failures to feed, failures to eject. It cocks, it, it, it sends those uh, empties way up high. Um, everybody really enjoyed shooting this gun and really enjoyed it. It's well patinaed. It's well loved. I'm probably not going to go out and put tons and tons of rounds through this gun all the time, but I, I bet I'll find myself taking this out to the range at least once, once a year. So if you're, you're thinking about purchasing one of these guns, you know, like I said, I, I would go to somebody that you trust that's going to have gone over the gun and tell you really what you're getting. Uh, you know, this isn't the most beautiful gun in the world, but I love it. I, I'm going to put my hands on it. I'm going to enjoy it. Um, I'm going to really enjoy this pistol. And it was worth it. And going through a good, reputable dealer made me feel really comfortable with it. So I hopefully you enjoyed the shooting impressions of it, the slow-mo uh, videos. It's a, a little bit of me and my buddies enjoying this particular gun. I want to thank you for supporting the channel. All the likes, the um, subscriptions, the shares are really appreciated. And as always, you stay classy, YouTube. Little middle baby bucket, do you want to live in California? No! Why?